Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Maximilian Dona and I'm happy to introduce you to our current paper, Unknown Object Segmentation from Stereo Images. This work was conducted together with Wout Burdijk and some other colleagues from the German Aerospace Center. Our goal here is, given a pair of stereo images, to segment an unspecified number of unknown object instances on any dominant horizontal surface. But why unknown objects? And why stereo images, you might ask? Well, first of all, in current setups, robots are only faced with objects they know, yes. But in long term, robots have to interact in dynamic, unstructured environments alongside with humans, and there, unplanned situations can occur. Hence, the assumption of just known objects is not applicable anymore there. Just think about like a human-robot interaction where the human just places a random new object on the table or just their coffee mug. Unrecognized objects then might quickly cause problems like collisions or something similar if the focus is only on known objects. If we want to integrate robots in our daily life, they have to deal with such scenarios. Additionally, robotic systems then have to adapt to new environments all the time and require a lifelong learning framework. Also there, the detection of unknown and new objects is crucial to learn them later on. In the area of unknown object segmentation, some cool work is already out. Most of these approaches mainly rely on depth information since it includes valuable cues for object boundaries. However, Although the quality of depth estimation sensors increased a lot over the last years, we still face situations in our lab in real-world scenarios where we obtain incomplete depth maps. Although active depth sensors and stereo matching sensors have totally different technologies and therefore strengths and weaknesses, in general one can say that transparent objects and metallic or black objects as well as bright light are kryptonite for depth estimation. Further, shiny and untextured surfaces can also cause problems. So how can we overcome these? We thought about this and asked ourselves, why doing this in-between step? Why using a pair of stereo images to generate depth data and forward this to a detection or segmentation network if we instead could directly use the stereo images and forward them to a network? This way, we a avoid the necessity of high quality depth data and b circumvent the decision where and how to fuse RGB and depth modalities. The idea is, by using the stereo images, the network implicitly extracts and fuses the most important features from both modalities in an optimal manner. Having the stereo images, we first extract features from both of them in a CMEs manner and fuse them in our proposed sub-pixel correlation layer. The correlation layer enables a dynamic adaptation of camera intrinsics. This can later be used to change the sensor as well as the baseline during testing without additional training. After some further processing steps like channel reduction and applying resonant layers with axial attention, we flatten the feature maps and input them into transformer. A transformer encoder applies the self-attention mechanism to separate object instances in the feature space, followed by the transformer decoder. In there, additional cross-attention is applied to separate the object instances by queries. While in the original detection transformer, the queries are feature vectors, we slightly adapt this architecture. Therefore, a small recap of the attention mechanism. First, the product between the so-called queries Q and the keys K is computed. Both are linear projections of input sequences. In self-attention, these sequences are the same. While in cross-attention, the query sequence XQ are learned embeddings which later represent the object instances. Then, having the attention map, we compute the attention weighted sum over the value map V, which is also a linear projection over the XKV sequence. The results are here in this example four query vectors which could encode information of four object instances. In order to directly segment, we adapt this computation step and apply the Einsum operation to obtain an expanded attention-weighted feature map for each query. Hence, instead of a set of query feature vectors, we obtain 2D query maps, where each represents one single object instance. Each of them can then be directly upsampled individually, and we obtain the binary object masks. Additionally, 
to guide the network towards 3D shape cues, we predict a disparity of the two stereo images as auxiliary task. The whole network we call Instance Stereo Transformer, or short INSTER. It is able to segment objects in an end-to-end -end manner without any post-processing, which also results in a fast inference time. Let's talk about the training. The network was trained with 40,000 synthetic images generated by Blender Proc. This is a pipeline building up on Blender for photorealistic training image generation. The link can be found below. In each sample, we placed 5 to 12 ShapeNet objects on different surfaces of the SunCG dataset. For the test set, we had the problem that there was no stereo dataset out there with instance annotations. Therefore, we had to create our own dataset called Stereo Instances on Surfaces, or short STEOs, which is publicly available. The dataset consists of eight different surfaces, like a workbench, a carpet, wooden table, conveyor belt, and some else. For each surface, we randomly place the camera setup on four different positions with different height and viewing angle, and record three scenes for two types of object placements. A simple one, where the objects do not touch, and a difficult one, where they can touch and overlap. The sensors we used were the set camera, as well as the RC Wizard 65, which are both stereo cameras with different baselines. To obtain good depth maps over the whole image, we record the scene also with a random dot pattern. By projecting a pattern, we artificially generate texture in a whole scene, which helps the stereo matching approach to estimate the depth. In total, CEOs consist of 192 stereo images for each sensor with manually annotated instance mask. Before we look at the benchmarks, a small insight in the instance results. Besides the presented architecture, we also train one network with only RGB as well as one instance version without the disparity loss. Interestingly, we achieve higher performances without the auxiliary task than the single RGB-based predictions. This indicates a positive effect of the stereo approach in combination with the correlation. Including guidance in form of the disparity loss leads to even better results. We evaluated our method as well as two state-of-the-art unknown object segmentation approaches on the Steos dataset. The results can be seen here. One can see a performance boost of the two RGBD-based baselines adding the random dot pattern. The same applies if only depth is used. Interestingly, the RGB-only approach reaches almost the same mean IOU as the RGBD, while depth only achieves just 25.2 mean IOU. We hypothesize that the network learned the fusion of RGB and depth in combination with the assumption of high-quality depth maps. This, however, is not always given in the Steos dataset, since there we have real scenarios where the depth map is not always perfect. Similar behavior we observe on the set sensor. In general, the depth-based methods have a hard time on the Steos dataset, and Insta outperforms them on both sensors. The reason, therefore, is the implicit fusion of appearance and shape cues, which does not require any depth maps. Now, after all these numbers and theory, some qualitative results. The scenes were recorded with different sensors, like the SET, the RC Wizard, and the Intel ReSense, each being a stereo sensor with different baselines. Please note that all the scenes are predicted with the same network, which was trained only once on the synthetic data. Hence, all objects you see here are unknown for the network. The only adaptation is done in the correlation layer, where we adapt the sampling steps on the baseline of the current test sensor. As you can see, Insta is able to robustly segment objects in different domains, like stones on Mount Etna, transparent objects on a working bench, which is pretty nice since depth sensors have problems there. It can also separate crowded object instances of the same class, and even segment objects through a glass pane. Of course, Insta is not perfect, as you can see in these examples. We integrated this approach on one of our robots to pick random unknown objects. The flickering of the masks is due to our single shot of processing. In general, the network is able to run on 18 FPS on an NVIDIA RTX 2080. 
Furthermore, we also combine Insta with the contact grasp net presented on this year's iCRA. Insta hereby predicts instant masks, which are then used to filter predicted grasp approaches of contact grasp net. Please note, so far there is no other method like a planning algorithm for picking the most suitable object integrated. This can result in such awkward grasps like the one from the can at the beginning. Furthermore, Insta never saw objects placed in each other like the banana now in the training set. However, the combination of both approaches is robust enough to clean the whole table in a decent manner. So, we propose Insta, a fast stereo-based instant segmentation approach which addresses the issue of low quality and incomplete depth maps. The method is able to extract disparity as well as RGB-based features and learns how to fuse them in an optimal manner. Furthermore, the proposed correlation mechanism enables a dynamic adaptation of the sensor and the baseline during test time. Besides promising results on steers, Insta is able to segment a variety of object shapes and textures in a completely different environment, which can be even used for grasping. With this work, we hope to increase the research interest in stereo-added robotic vision, since we think that this is a good alternative to depth-based methods. Our code and the dataset are publicly available under these links. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Mm -hmm.